Anthony, you set up Red Carpet Productions in 1996. Um, abandoning law in favor of film production. Yes. What made you do it and how did you do it? Uh, I had done law at university, arts law, because at 18 years of age I didn't really know what I wanted to do and it was sort of a fill-in thing until I could work it out. So I was lucky to work in a small law firm that did music law and I'd always had an interest in film, studied it at university as well as just loved it. So I uh, was able to build up a small film practice there so I began to work with producers and see what they do and it was a really helpful way to get a, a handle on the business because you were dealing with producers who often had problems or were in the process of negotiating their deals so I got a great overview and uh, met a lot of the people in the infrastructure in the government agencies as well as uh, other producers and filmmakers so it put me in a good position in hindsight for when I quit law to say I was a producer. Uh, at the time, I was scared witless and thought, what am I doing? Um, because there was nothing lined up. And, uh, but I made the leap, and once you actually jump, it's uh, a lot more comfortable. So was there any one thing that prompted you to actually leave law and set up a production company? Uh, one of my clients was Rosemary Blight, um, who I'd known at school. So uh, we were acquaintances and I became her lawyer and she had a crisis that I ended up handling at the Cannes Film Festival. I had a couple of trips to Cannes as a lawyer, which was a great eye-opener to the international industry. And um, she was one of the people who said you'd make a great producer. So having people who were already producers encouraging me made me feel a little more confident about it. But I just knew I couldn't stay in law. It just wasn't something I wanted to spend the rest of my life in. So those early days uh, at Red Carpet Productions, you produced some short films to start with. How did you select those? I, again, had a friendship with Kate Shortland. Um, we'd been friends for about half a dozen years before either of us were in film. I was uh, still working as a waiter. I hadn't even take, started a law job when Kate and I first met. And um, the night I quit law, and said, handed in and said, I'm leaving in one month. She came over to my house that night with her partner, Tony, who's also now a great filmmaker, and said the idea, she told me about an idea for what she thought was a short film, and I said, I think that's too much for a short, I think you could do a feature, which uh, terrified her. But she came over and said, look, if, if, we do, if I write that as a feature, would you produce it? So that was the day I quit law, and that feature ended up seven years later being made as Somersault. So then you had some shorts to produce. What, what, did you have a business plan? Because of having worked with uh, lawyer, uh, producers on shorts and features um, with the AFC and the FFC, I said to Kate that for us to make our first feature, we needed to show that we could make short films, both for her dramatically and for me, that I could manage a budget and deliver on time and all the rest of it. So. Um, as part of the plan to make the feature, uh, we began developing some short film ideas. Kate had, we thought, let's just do something simple to people in a room, nice and cheap. They never end up that way. Um, so our first film together was Pent Up House, which the AFC fully financed. So that was a great experience of having a properly paid crew, production manager and uh, production accountant and tax paid and all the rest of it. And then we went straight into a, um, an unpaid short film, Flower Girl, which we made with a $40,000 grant from the Japan Foundation. So we did that on 16 mil. How did you raise that 40000 grant? Uh, Kate developed the script with the Japanese co-writer, Jun Tagami, and he made us aware of um, these possible grants from the Japan Foundation. So we applied for that. Their terms were, however, that they would only give you the money upon delivery of the film. So we then had to find ways of, of making it without the actual cash. Unfortunately, the AFC again came uh, to the party and gave us a, a loan to cover that. So in your business plan, this was, uh, <laughs> this was not highly lucrative, I suspect. No, not at all. <laughs> um, but you also imply that I, at this stage, had a business plan. There was, there was a passion to make film, but there was no real sense of uh, a plan. And there were many times in the 
the six years of developing the uh, Somersault script where uh, I questioned what on earth I was doing in this business and um, was ready to change. I had, um, in the early years, I worked out of my bedroom. Um, then I was really fortunate to get some office space um, at Shanahan Management. Um, they had a lawyer, in-house lawyer who'd moved out and they had an empty office and somebody there who knew somebody I knew uh, rang and said, would I be uh, interested in this space in exchange for looking over some contracts periodically? So I had no money to pay office rent at the time, so it was a perfect arrangement. And on top of that, I, um, so that's the space from which I developed and produced the two short films. And on top of that, I got to experience um, all these contract negotiations for producers dealing with one of the top actors agencies in the country, if not you know, the world. And that was an incredible experience and opportunity for me. So um, I had no money at that time coming from any of the film stuff. There was, I think we got paid, Kate and I got paid $6,000 each for the couple of years work we did on Pent Up House and nothing on Flower Girl. Um, though all of us and the crew ended up getting a deferred payment sometime later when the film actually uh, sold uh, overseas. So filmmaking was not the source of revenue in all those years. It was um, doing some freelance business affairs advising for other filmmakers. So I maintained some of the the work I've been doing as a lawyer in these years. I also had um, uh, periods where I was waiting tables on weekends um, and also I would run a uh, meditation workshop, a six week course at, at nights periodically. So there were long days, there was no money to be going out for dinner for all those years and there was a lot of time where all of my friends and family were staring at me going, what are you doing? Why aren't you in some law firm with a decent salary and buying a home instead of having periods of couch surfing because I wasn't paying rent even on a home for one of those years? Um, so it was a curious period. But something in you says just keep going. So you do. Was there a, a, a moment at which that project, which later became Somersault, became a reality and, and started feeding finance to you? Or what, did it happen rather gradually and slowly? We put in a... Kate and I worked together on teasing out a first draft and applying for script development around the middle of 96. Um, and the AFC came, uh, gave us support there. And then we went on to do... Um, so there was a nominal... I don't actually think there was any producer fee in that, in that early stage. Producers back at, at 10 years ago weren't considered... We were still coming out of the, the heady days of 10BA, as I used to be aware of as a lawyer, where producers were considered to rot the system and make all this money. So there wasn't a sense that producers needed to be um, supported as much then. Fortunately, that is changing and there's increasing programs of support for producers so that you can stay in the line of work you're doing. I think they've, they've had statistics of seeing how many producers were making one film and then leaving the industry because it was just too hard to stay in it. Or they were taking jobs in the government agencies for uh, a number of years. Um, so the money came really when um, support became more solid when we got to a stage of applying for Aurora, which was 2002, which was the year the New South Wales Film and Television Office initiated the script workshop that was about nurturing the whole team, not just the writer. So there was some finance in that year, um, but not a lot else coming during this development stage until uh, production.